Uh, welcome. Uh, I just wanted to give you an introduction to uh, LabVIEW. I posted these notes online. I just wanted to add some commentary to them uh, before we get started in Lab. Uh, first off, um, LabVIEW is a tool used uh, quite often to measure data. It's uh, known as a virtual instrument or a VI. And like a regular instrument, like for example, like an oscilloscope, an instrument has probably some components that display data or allow some sort of user interface like buttons or knobs. Uh, but behind the user interface, if you were to take the screen off an oscilloscope, you would see all the wiring and circuitry and the components required to make the system work. Well, similar to this is... Lab view, which can have a front panel with a user interface that will display values or have buttons and controls, things that the user can change. But behind the user interface is the block diagram, where the program, where the guts of the program is located, where it's uh, all the components are wired together to function according to uh, some speci specific need. So here in this case, you can see uh, this is uh, meant to simulate a square wave of a specific duty cycle, in this case 75%, and if I run it, it'll cycle the square wave at 60 hertz. A pretty simple program, um, but uh, to make it work, this graph is updated with data collected from um, some simulated signals. So. Uh, the wiring in the background will not, is what makes it work, but nobody wants to really look at this kind of a mess. And so we make a nice graphical interface where we can display data and allow the user to control uh, the, the various parameters of the program. So if we want to talk about uh, LabVIEW in general, I'd like to spend some time to introduce you to various components or the things that I've listed in the uh, posted notes online. The um, palace. So on the front panel, this is where we have a uniface. We can, if we right click, we get a palette that I can pin down here so it doesn't disappear as I move away. Um, of several functions that we can add to the front for our user interface. Um, and they may consist of uh, maybe some numeric indicators that indicate uh, values to uh, maybe some uh, control buttons that we can uh, change uh, or allow the user to change the value. Um, you see here corresponding control has a corresponding um, uh, block diagram or a block in the block diagram window. Um, but when I come back here, notice what the controls palette looks like versus, if I right click in that block diagram, the functions palette. Now this is where the wiring is found. So we can create a while loop or we can create some arithmetic functions or maybe some true or false boolean, um, some comparison, and uh, it's, it's here where we can uh, program the, the guts of, the, of the, our structure or program that we're trying to write. Now, uh, there's another tool. Uh, if we go to view and look at the tools palette, this is uh, what my cursor takes the shape of depending on where I'm located. And it's because of this green tool that it changes automatically. See, and I turned it off. I'm going to get this crosshairs um, or this arrow, and that's about it. If I uh, come over here, I still get this arrow, which means I can move this around, but I can uh, never actually control the buttons. I have to change the hand tool to be able to control the button. So uh, it's kind of annoying to have to go back and forth all the time. So by default, this is left on where it'll change automatically um, between the uh, various tools. 
Uh, so this is normally, normally hidden. Um, when it comes to wiring, uh, again, use the spool. We can show you an example. I'll create, um, let's say we want to add this value to a second value. Well, a quick way to do this, I can right click at this node and say, I want to create uh, maybe a control. And you see the control automatically appears here. And I want to create an indicator to display the resulting value. Let's see here, let me drag this down. So as I run this repeatedly, you see as I add, it's going to display the output. So these are two are controls because the user can control them, and this is an indicator. I can't control it, but it will indicate a value to the user. Um, oh, quick shortcut to clean up wires. If I delete one of these blocks, uh, these wires, I can select by hand and delete them one at a time, or a quick way is just use Control or Command V and automatically delete and erase the broken wires. Um, so again, I've, I've talked a little bit about the difference between controls and indicators throughout this. Uh, again, a control is something the user can control on the front panel. An indicator is something that indicates a value or graph or something to the to the user. And indicators may be, uh, let's say, a light. Let's make this a super light. Or I can have a control that maybe is just a toggle switch. And I can switch a value on and off. Um, again, these are all you can customize them, not just size but also if you go into the properties you can also adjust the color um, and to do whatever you feel is uh, best for your uh, your user interface come back here context help uh, this is a neat tool if you go to help and say so show context help what this is is a dynamic tool that wherever you put the mouse it'll display uh, the help for that tool. It's most helpful in the block diagram where it will show you how to wire th certain things together. For example, if you may have, uh, let's say, a complicated uh, block that's kind of confusing, you can put your mouse over it and it'll describe what to do or even you can click on the detailed help to get more information. So that's, a, that's a helpful tool. Um, let's see, okay, structures. So for programming, um, uh, so far you've had programming where you've done a while loop and if statement. Well, the same thing exists here, but now in a graphical thing. A while loop is just that. It's a loop, and it's going to repeat everything inside this loop until you tell it to stop using this stop button. So here I can say, I'm going to create a control. Now here's a stop button over here that now the user can tell when they want to stop this uh, this program from running, okay. or at least that loop from running. You have this indicator here. This is a um, this is the iteration number starting from zero. So every time this iterates, it's going to go zero, one, two, three. You can use this value if you so desire to display the iteration number, or maybe you only want this loop to run four times. You can use that to control when to stop the loop. Um, instead, if you want to if you know you're only going to run four times, you can then use a for loop, and you can tell it to run only four times if you like. Some other structures, a case structure, this is a true or false structure. Maybe um, you want to wire uh, a control, and depending on whether it's true, you can run certain code while it's true, or when it's false, you can run a uh, different code. It just depends on the value of the input. Um, additional a sequence structure. Go back to structure and show you a sequence. A flat sequence is probably easier to see. Um, what a flat sequence is is we'll right click and say uh, add frame after. What this does is sometimes you want one piece of code to run before another piece of code. So I could say I want to run this before I run this. And 
And so once this executes, it'll then move on to this. We notice it looks like a film strip, and it's supposed to act like a sequential film. You can add frames before or after to uh, get the right sequence, depending on your needs for your program. Uh, last data types, uh, the LabVIEW uh, tutorial or uh, video online uh, gives a good description of the different data types. But you need to remember, note the different colors. For example, orange is a floating point number, means it can have decimals. Blue is an integer, means it can be only one, twos, and threes, no decimal places. Uh, Boolean, true or false, is green. And the thickness of wires also uh, indicates something. If you have a really thick wire, that means it's uh, an array, it's a greater dimension. It's going to be a 1D or 2D array. A thin wire means it's just a single value. So knowing the shapes and colors of the wire uh, is very helpful for debugging. All right, that's uh, the notes that I've posted. Um, hopefully that's uh, a good start. And now, best places to learn is just to start playing and uh, practicing yourself.